Here we go. I love the colors. All right. So welcome, uh, welcome, gentlemen. It's all gentlemen and me. I'm so lucky. <laughs> I get the uh, the great list of people who are interested in this topic. So uh, again, this topic today, it's how to become an authoritative realtor. And I know that, um, you know, when we were publishing this, the, the content mentioned about blogging and it's more than that. It's it's about using a, a toolkit that will really help you become much more prominent in your business and to leverage all of the tools that you already have. So pretty much every tool that I'm showing you today is free. So to take advantage of all the free tools will really make a difference in terms of your being able to showcase yourself as an authority in whatever area you wish to specialize in or practice in. So that's really what this is about. Um, blogging, and I'll show you when we get to that section, is just one of the vehicles that I use ChatGPT in order to help me create content that is timely, that is uh, interesting, that is, you know, um, you know, just prevalent to today's marketplace. But the other tools that I use, not just ChatGPT, but of course my KV Core or Max Core, that's where I actually put my blog posts. I also want to make them look a little pretty. So I use Canva in terms of making them look pretty. And uh, then also, if you're going to, to create, take the time and create some content, you want to be able to reuse this content in other for formats. So you'll get in and I'll show you how I use uh, ChatGPT to help get me started, to help me pick the topics, to help me write the blog posts, and then to repurpose my content for doing things like YouTube videos or reels, whatever it is you want to do for video content or other social media uh, content. So you really want to take one topic, one content piece, and really apply it across the board. And that's really uh, will help you because people will see your content, they'll see it in different formats, and then they're going to be like, oh, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. I see them all over the place. It also helps to make a more consistent message, which is also very helpful. So as I mentioned, blogging is a critical tool. It's a critical task. A blog doesn't have to be a long blog. In fact, I try to keep my blog posts about 300 words. You can go longer if you want, but I do try and keep them short and sweet. Uh, because I'm trying to keep my blog posts short, I will often uh, also um, ensure that, you know, I've got a graphic there so that it's attractive and it helps to, to draw people into uh, my website and draw them into, of course, my business. That is uh, the goal. And when you plug the, these blog posts into your K KV Core, or your Max Core, you can actually get some statistical information to find out which blog posts are very popular. So I'll show you my statistics after. I'll switch the screens and show you that. But it is something that is relatively easy. Of course, you can get some additional content for your blogs from the Toronto Real Estate Board. There's uh, some great images that you could use there. They, you know, and again, you want to you want to multi-purpose your content. So if you're doing something somewhere, you want to be able to use it somewhere else. So. What we're going to have a look at is where to get content. I think that for a lot of realtors, that's the hard part is what am I going to write about, Pamela? I don't know what to write about. And so a couple of things that you want to consider are what's relevant? What's happening in the media? What are what are the reporters talking about? What, you know, what are you seeing in some of your social feeds? So there's going to be some great things like industry news, what's happening. Of course, last week we had an interest rate height. Uh, there may be some great content to talk about how the how the um, interest rate increase will impact or could impact people buying, selling, moving. And so that would be a great topics. Uh, market trends, again, what's happening? Uh, where are people buying, selling? What's happening with um, with people? And so are they able to see uh, you know, those, those types of uh, bits of information and how can you expand on those things as well? Of course, uh, there's some local uh, real estate publications. 
there's industry reports, and also you might see something that maybe uh, a colleague has on their social platforms that you think, wow, that's a really great content piece, and I would like to uh, learn a little bit more about that and to be able to expand upon that so that my audience is able to, you know, also see some of the things that are relevant. So in terms of finding content, those are some of the, the great things. However, those are just one area. Uh, what I like to do is I like to use chat GPT to help me with some ideas and to help me also with writing the blog post. So I'm going to switch screens now. Hopefully uh, nobody will disappear. And again, don't forget that I popped a link in the chat so that you can go and get that. And uh, that will help you um, to be able to see some additional tools that I gave to you. So hang on two secs. I'm just going to switch screens over to ChatGPT. Okay, so you should see my ChatGPT screen now. And uh, you can see I've done a whole lot of work here. So there's there's tons of stuff in here um, that I've done on all sorts of different topics. But uh, I've also added an additional tool called AI, uh, AIP uh, RM for chat. And it just allows me to get these additional uh, additional items that might be of interest to you. Uh, so, for example, if you want to write and make it human sounding, there's a, a tool that will help ChatGPT prepare in that way. If you want to write something that has a system, sorry, search engine optimization, there's a chat uh, element that will help you with that. Uh, you can write a complete book in one click if you want, although I found that it didn't quite write the whole book, but it certainly wrote uh, some great chapters based on the questions that I asked. You can write a YouTube script. So there's all sorts of things in here. Right now, ChatGPT is free. There is a paid version that the company did buy. It's only like $20 US a month. If you are finding that it's really busy and you can't get your, your prompts reviewed, then it might be that it's time for you to spend that $20 a month and get it uh, to um, get it so that you take the priority. So hopefully we won't have any problems here. But the first thing I want to do is I want to get a list of topics. So what I'm going to ask ChatGPT is I'm going to say, um, write a list of SEO, sorry, top 10 SEO topics for real estate. Um, let's do buyers, real estate buyers. And I'm going to press enter and ChatGPT is, is going out. It's doing the work for me. And it's coming up with a list of topics And sometimes, again, it's garbage in, garbage out when it comes to this. So in this case, I didn't quite ask my question correctly. So the, the responses that I got are not really what I was looking for. So I'm going to try that again. So I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to write, um, provide 10 long tail S SEO um topics for real estate in Toronto. And I'm going to let it work on that one. The long tail topics are when an end user does a search on Google. That is what a long tail topic is. So a short tail would be real estate, buyer, seller. But a long tail, as you can see, is going to give you a much more robust heading. So now it's come up with a bunch of headings here. Again, I asked it about specifically Toronto, long tail, SEO are search topics for Toronto, real estate pertaining to Toronto. It's given me a bunch. What do you think of these? Let me give you a second to have a look at them. So I think some of these topics are quite good. 
What I want to do now, though, is I want to expand and I'm just going to choose one of them. I can come back to this anytime I want because ChatGPT will store this list for me. So I can revisit this list again and again and again, which is great. Yes, you can delete the ones that you don't need anymore, but you can also uh, leave them here and revisit this again. When you revisit it again, chat will look at what was previously done and assume you're still on that train of thought, which is kind of nice. So let me say, I'm looking at uh, this one here, number six, uh, Toronto condo market, pros and cons of living in a high rise. That sounds like a pretty good topic. I bet you anything, there's going to be a lot of people that are interested in, in that particular topic. So I'm going to say, write a 300 word blog post for number six and I'm not sure if I need the word above or not but let me just see if it needs it and yep here it is this is magic I love it mm-hmm <laughs> Again, chat GPT and this automation is not going to replace you. It could never replace you because who's giving it the prompts? We are, humans are. So it's never going to replace you. But what I like to think of it as is like you have now purchased yourself an assistant. And this assistant is going out and doing some research putting some words, structuring some words together and coming up with, in this case, a blog post that is not too bad. Now, again, I would recommend <laughs> that you go through and you have a look at the blog post to make sure that there's nothing in here that is wrong and that there's everything in here is going to work you know, fairly well. For example, we don't in Canada typically use HOA fees, right? Uh, so I, when I come in and copy that, I'm going to edit that to say condo fees or maintenance fees um, versus HOA fees, just because we don't use that term here. Uh, but for the most part, the rest of it is fairly generic and also fairly true. Now that I've got that post done, I'm going to come over here and copy it. So this is the copy tool. Boom, copied it. I then go over to my KV Core platform. And once you're into KV Core, you'll see there's an option here called Quick Actions and Blog Posts. Then here's a button that's, that's called Add Post. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to paste that in. Boom, paste it in. All right, now that it's in here, this is where I could actually do the edits. Uh, so again, uh, I'm going to take that title and paste that into the title area. These headings like title introduction, it puts it in there, but I don't like them. So I tend to delete them. And I'm just gonna go and do a little bit of editing because it's got some extra spaces in here that I also didn't like when I pasted it in. Some of these headings though, I may want to uh, format them, perhaps give them a, a slightly different look. In this case, I just bolded it. I'm going to, again, take away those extra spaces. And remember, I said I didn't like homeowners association fees. So I'm going to call it maintenance slash condo fees. And same thing here. Maintenance slash condo fees. And the word conclusion, I don't know why chat always wants to put that word conclusion in there, but I don't like it. Um, and so here is my my blog post all done. Now, that would be fine. I could certainly leave that and have it published. Uh, I can also save it as a draft if I'm not quite done with it. However, it's not all that pretty. And so remember I said I like to kind of enhance them a little bit. You can add a graphic in, but I don't have a graphic associated with this. So that's when I go over and use a tool called Canva. So here's my Canva. And with Canva, uh, I can do all sorts of things. Canva is another free tool. Again, who loves free? I love free. Um, there's a lot of other things we have to spend our money on in this business. So free, why not? Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to start off by just choosing a social media post and maybe a 
let's see, maybe a Facebook post. And this is just the size of the graphic. So this is the size of the graphic. When I download it, I can make it bigger, smaller, whatever the case may be. Here's a bunch of images that I could choose, but I could also come up here and type real estate. And it's gonna come up with a bunch of images that are real estate E. And uh, that will allow me to, to come in and, uh, you know, perhaps pick something that is, is better. So maybe this one, maybe this one. Okay, so maybe this post. Uh, for one, that's not me. I've already uploaded my picture. So I think I'll probably come in and just uh, find one of my uh, images and I'll upload it. And again, remember the topic of that particular blog post what had to do with uh, pros and cons of living in a high rise. So I'm just going to actually paste in that title in here. And I don't want them to call Harper. Who do I want them to call? And same thing, I'll probably remove all of uh, this content and put my actual uh, content in here, my phone number and my email address. And I might even put in my uh, website address. All right, so uh, this is okay. I would like to have something else on it though. I want some picture of a of a home or a condo. Let's see, condo. Um, this one. Okay, so there it is. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna download this. And when it's downloading, it asks me about the size I want. So I might make it a little bit smaller and uh, then I'll download it. So now it's coming down. And I'm gonna come back to my blog post, which is here. And I'm going to insert that photo. So I'm just going to go and find it. It again asks me for the size. So this is this is a little bit big, but it's not crazy big. But there it is. With my with my uh, blog. Oh, let me make that a little bold so it stands out. And let me just have a look and see. And maybe at the end, I might just add in. So when you are ready to find your next home, let's discuss these pros and cons before making your move. All right. Um, now, I sometimes put in, uh, like, I'll, I'll keep a standard little blurb that will be what I use to end all of my, uh, all of my blog posts. You don't have to do that. It's just something that I tend to do. But I'm ready to publish that. So I'm just going to click on publish. Boom, there it is. And uh, I've got it in here. It'll be in my list here. 
somewhere. You can see that I've got this huge list. While I'm looking at this list, so this is all of my blog posts. So I don't just talk about this. I actually do this. I have got a ton of blog posts. I don't even know if there's a count here. Let's see. Um, 35. I've got 35 blo uh, blog posts. So yes, I'm quite prolific when it comes to blog posts. But what you're going to see is these numbers represent uh, the number of people that have looked at that particular blog post. So the condo amenity one has always done really well. It's got 42 people who viewed that post. And uh, so let me just sort these here by just sort them here so that you can see the most popular blog post was the condo amenity followed by the new agent realtor tools followed by will the market crash followed by you, know, you can see the numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and then here's the one that we just did right here now I can click on this button here. Again, remember I'm in Max Core, KV Core right now. This is the blog post itself. So it's just gonna open it up. This is the blog post. So there's my picture that I had. Um, I, I should have made it, maybe made it a little bit bigger because you can see that this heading kind of went a little bit over. Um, that's the only thing is sometimes depending on the computer that you use, it may, um, it may kind of format in a, Kind of a strange way. I don't know if there's much you can do about that. But here's my post. Here it is, up and ready to go. And people can leave comments. Here's my other posts, all sorts of things. Now, if I want to, I can actually grab this. And remember, one of your goals is to repurpose your content. So one of the places that I might repurpose it, uh, a good place for text-based content is uh, Twitter. Twitter's a good place. So I could actually come in and paste that link down. Maybe even add a, a little heading on it. Pros and cons of condo living in Toronto. Um, the purpose of doing this is that I want people to click on the link when they click on the link that takes them to my KV Core site, I want them to review other other you know information on the site. But what do I really want? What do I really want by doing this? Hello? Did I lose everybody? No, you're here. You're, you're, you're trying to get more exposure real to the audience. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. That's the, that's the whole goal of that is uh, to try and get more, um, a bigger audience. So I want them to come and click on the link. In this case, I also put the, the social image here. Where might another good place be to publish this particular article? Instagram, probably. Um, Instagram, yep. Certainly, this image again. I went to Canva, created an image that was a social, a social size image. Canva would be sorry. Um, Instagram would be great. Yep. Thanks, Helen. Depending on who your audience is, of course, LinkedIn. If you're looking to uh, capture the business community who may have people coming and going, um, in um, LinkedIn may be good. But again, it's you want to repurpose it. Now, the next thing that I could do with this is I'm going to come back to ChatGPT. Here's my article right here. If I want to repurpose this, maybe what I want to do is I want to do a video pertaining to this. So I could either just, you know, just record a video and read this as a script. Um, but I could also get ChatGPT to rework the words to make it into a script. So rewrite the article to make a YouTube video script for narration.
Now, you all have cell phones, correct? Correct. <laughs> I would yeah. hope so. I would hope so. Um, so you can either just take this script, print it out if you want, and uh, you could record it. Or if you're sitting at uh, your desk, you can, of course, get the cell phone and focus it on yourself, focus it on your community, whatever the case may be. Go and, you know, take some pictures of um, local shots. Uh, you can pop those into ChatGPT, sorry, pop those into Canva as well. And that would give you a, an opportunity to start and prepare this document as a script and see it's got narration and gives you some ideas of, of you know, things that you could do to make this video a little bit more exciting. I don't know if we have an aerial view, but you know what? Canva has an aerial view of the Toronto skyline. Shot of busy residents. Again, you may not have that, but Canva has that. So I want to come back now, now that I've kind of given you a demo of how I put this all together, uh, let me bring us back to my slideshow. Because I want to show you a couple of prompts. Okay, there you go. Okay, um, so we we just had a look at how you can uh, leverage ChatGPT. Here's a few example prompts. So you remember that we talked about, you know, asking it for those long tail SEO uh, items, and I can copy that and put that in the chat for you as well, so that you've got a sample of what I actually used. And there we go. There, so there's my my prompt. Um, here's a couple of things that I asked for before. Uh, so here's a couple of uh, just examples, uh, top hidden. So these are the results of the prompts. How to start building your property portfolio. Um, you know, pretty much what you'll notice is that this will take you out of your typical comfort zone and move you to an area where you maybe haven't explored as much. That's what I found for me is, you know, my knowledge base goes so deep and so far. And then after that, I'm kind of getting stale with ideas. So I leverage this to help me create some additional ideas so that I don't have to sit back and say, oh, I better not write anything today because I can't think of anything to write. Now you have no excuse. There's lots of stuff for you to write about. So with Canva, again, it's a graphical tool. You can use it to create very basic blog post uh, images. If you wanted, like, say you had a list, say, say ChatGPT prepared a list of something for you, you can also go back into Canva and pop those things into a pretty graphic uh, in order to make a, um, you know, just sort of a story with your different uh, list items. So again, it, it works really nicely together. Canva is a very versatile tool. It's very user friendly. Uh, if you are stuck with using Canva, there's tons of videos out there that you could search and it offers some help. And Canva also has a built in element for uh, AI as well. So it can do some kind of magical things with that, which is kind of nice. Uh, and it's constantly changing and updating. Again, there's a paid version of Canva, which I do actually pay for. I think I pay about 150 bucks a year for that. But for me, it's worth it just because I get some uh, extra features, uh, extra fonts, extra um, uh, templates, extra graphics, extra sound. So pretty much it is my design tool. Uh, but for the most part, there's a free version of it, which will probably do you quite well. It's just eventually I outgrew my free version. 
Yeah, the nice thing is you can edit uh, to, uh, as well. So say you have a nice photo of yourself, but the background has things that you don't want. You can actually uh, use that to remove the background, which I've done on some of my photos. It just gives me a cleaner photo than some of the other ones that have extra stuff on them. Sorry, Pamela, if I may add, the, the Canva Pro, you can share it with four people. So in total, I think it only costs maybe four. If, if you can share it with four people, it's only maybe costs four bucks a month, four, four to two bucks a year. So it's really nice. negligible. Yeah. Nice. That's good to good to know. Um, Reusing the content. So you've already seen that I'm a big fan of repurposing your content. You want to do it once and use it a few times. We can reuse the content for videos. We can reuse the content for social posts. Um, you can reuse the content for, you know, again, pretty much anything that you want. Uh, you can also use it and send it out to clients. Uh, again, the goal of doing this is that you want people to come back to your website. You want them to come back. You want them to search. You want them to register so that you can capture them as a lead. Uh, and that is really the goal of this. So you, when you're choosing content po points, you want to have some, you know, fairly broad points. And then just like me, I noticed that that one on condo amenities seems to be, you know, my hottest post. So maybe I need to go and do another one along those lines that talks about the least used condo amenities. Uh, that one I also converted into a, a video uh, and it was just a simple narration video using some still images. It wasn't that it was me on on camera, just a bunch of still images. So I leveraged those and put them into my YouTube channel as well. Again, you've got access to this PowerPoint. The, the link is um, in the bonus material. So you've got this. So if this is small, don't worry about it. You've got it. You'll be able to review it afterwards. Uh, I find that the best part about using ChatGPT for my blog usage is I can create I can sit down and create two or three blog posts. So you remember that that list of of the long tail items that we had right here. That list I can come in now and say, well, I'm ready to do another blog post. Like you saw, it took me how long? Less than five minutes to do an entire post, including getting a pretty graphic on there. So maybe I'll come in and I'll do another one. This list is a perfect list for me to do 10 different blog posts. Um, once I've done the 10 different posts, I'm going to go and do my social graphics. It is designed to help you speed through this, uh, you know, still in your own voice if you want. So let me say, so here's one on number seven, historic homes in Toronto. So uh, write a humorous. blog post on number seven above. And it's going to write something now that's supposed to be funny. The wacky wallpaper wonder. Look at that. Mysterious maze manner. The quirky quarters. <laughs> um, I like this. I'm actually going to be publishing this next. Um, it's kind of funny. So again, it took that SEO long tail topic, and now it's written a, a a humorous post, and people love humor. So unearthing Toronto's historic homes: a journey through quirky relics. And isn't that a crazy funny title? But I will do the same thing. I will be copying that, pasting that, and creating it into a blog post. Maybe showing if I could find, you know, if I had a a B-roll of some footage, maybe finding an old relic of a house, um, you know, that might be might be perfect to help showcase this particular blog post. And wouldn't it be funny as a, a short video as well? So that list of 10, I got 10 topics now. Even with that, I could I could come in and and uh, you know reuse some of this content. That's your goal is to to get the content where you can reuse and uh, enjoy it so that you've got uh, new information that will constantly bring people back to your website. 
All right. So just as a, uh, as a reminder, what we had a look at today was we talked about the fact that your goal as an authoritative realtor is to provide interesting content that will attract users to your site. That's really your goal. Uh, how we do that is by using a series of tools. So the tools that we looked at today included all the tools that you currently have access to, and most of them are free. All of them, if you want. Uh, so we started with having our KV core and the ability to do blog posts. Uh, then we had a look at, well, what do I write? So we use chat GPT in order to help us uh, prepare a list of topics, give us inspiration. And then we could even use chat GPT to actually help us write the blog post. Of course, you can uh, modify it. You can use your own language if you want. Uh, you can, you know, you could even have the blog post written in the uh, in the voice of an expert. You could have the blog post written so that it appeals to somebody who knows nothing about uh, real estate. So you can ask for those types of prompts uh, in ChatGPT, and it will prepare your article accordingly. It doesn't always get it right, and if it doesn't, it's probably because our prompts were too vague. So go back to the drawing board, just like you saw me do. It doesn't hurt my feelings. This is not a person. Um, I know some people say, please write blah, blah, blah. I don't use please. I just ask it to do what I want it to do. It's not a person. It's a robot. <laughs> um, but then it's like, I'm I'm getting it to write, maybe having to rewrite uh, some content, uh, taking my content points, expanding them out, publishing them in my blog, and in order to enhance them a bit, making a, an image using Canva that allows me to republish that particular image elsewhere. And again, the goal is to attract people back to your website. So you do want uh, to remember these power tools. So KV Core, um, ChatGPT, Canva. I think those are it. Those are the tools. That's it. Did I miss one? It's so easy. Oh my goodness. We should all be doing this. <laughs> so uh, how many of you are prepared to give this a try or have given this a try already? I'm ready. I'm already typing on my chat GPT. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And are you publishing the blog post, Reg? I will. I will. Um, okay. Right now, I'm just instructing chat GPT as we speak. Oh, okay, good, good. So for some other things, and I know that again, in that tool, that bonus material that I plugged into the chat, I'll just put that in there again. This is all in the agent tools page, but I'll just copy it and paste it into the chat in case you came late and missed it. Um, there's a couple of cheat sheets in there that might help give you some idea about what you can ask. Uh, basically now, if I wanna move off of this to a new chat, I just click on new chat. And then I can start over again. So now I'm starting over again. Um, let's say you have a listing. Uh, this is something again, from a realtor standpoint that you might enjoy very much is if I have a listing, so I have a, um, write a listing description for a condo at 55 Harbor Square, Toronto, which is a two bedroom, two bathroom with a few updates and facing the lake. It also ha has one parking spot and a locker. It is for lease for, I'll just put 3,500 per month. Okay, so I gave it enough information, but I asked it for a listing description and here it is writing my listing description. I forgot to limit the number of words. And here you go, here's my listing description. Um, this one might be too many words. So again, what happens if you make a mistake? Who I made the mistake, ChatGPT gave me exactly what I asked for. I just didn't ask for the right thing. I could say, um, rewrite, oops, uh, rewrite the description to, do you know how many words Treb allows? 
no idea. Let's do 300 words. I don't know, but we'll do 300 words. Rewrite the description to 300 words. Well, that's way more than 300 words. Let me try it again. still seems like a lot of words. I don't know how many words were allowed in, in TRAB. I, I know it's not this many. Um, but what you could do is pick out ports, portions of the content that you like and use that. If you're doing a listing brochure, this content would be ideal to be placed on a listing brochure, even if a portion of it is, uh, if it's too wordy for what TREB will allow. Like, for example, I don't need this in the TREB description, but um, this portion would be really good on the listing brochure. And now I could say, rewrite the description for a renter who is an executive. Somehow, I hi, it's Shauna. I'm not getting the current screen. I don't know what happened. Can somebody help me? Oh, maybe that's it. I think she just stopped sharing the screen now. Yeah. Oh. There. Oh, okay. Now Thank I can you. see that. Before I could just see like your slide. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was nothing there before. Thanks, Pamela. Yep. Thanks. So I rewrote it, uh, rewrote the description um, again. Uh, it just, again, I rewrote the description for a renter who is an executive and it's it's chosen different words. Again, maybe this is too wordy. Some of the content you would probably maybe filter away. I could get it to um, to do, let's see, rewrite. I don't know how, how long they can be. It's so many characters, but. Rewrite the description limited to 100 words. Let's see what it gives me now. There it is. So that worked. Short, sweet. Taking, again, it started with this long, long description. Again, it really is about what you put in. Uh, and if I ask the wrong question, it will give me the wrong answer. And that's my fault. There it is, limited to 100 words. Now it's it's done that correctly. Um, so um, what other examples would you like to see that you think in your business could be beneficial? Give me an example and we'll do a, a chat GPT search. Pamela, may I interrupt? Sure. Uh, well, ChatGPT is an excellent tool in terms of bringing uh, content uh, and creating content for us and uh, everyone basically who is in the business. But uh, at the end of the day, the, uh, it is our responsibility to check that the material that was provided is actually legit and it's right. really correct. And so uh, if, 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 if I may, basically, I'm just reading something off the internet. It happened uh, almost a month, uh, almost uh, two weeks ago. A New York lawyer is facing court hearing. Yes, I heard own. that. It's, this is really funny. So the chat GPT was referencing to some basically legal cases that yes. was never existed. And now yes. this lawyer is now in charge. So just uh, make sure that what is really chat GPT is offering, you, you do have to verify that this, this material is really correct. It's a, 
Yes. So you don't want to go basically to 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 some legal uh, legal issues. Yeah. In fact, actually, on Sunday morning this past Sunday, they had a session where they were using um, something like ChatGPT. It was a robot in this case, but it would be a similar technology. And uh, same thing. They said that the robot used um, creative imagination in order to come up with names of books that did not exist. They did not exist, but the 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 robot uh, just created these names of books that sounded legit, and uh, but they weren't. Yeah, so always check the the types of topics that I'm looking at are, you know, like they're they're more info. I'm not referencing anything in particular, um, so it just could be that again, depending on what it is. But absolutely, Hamid, you're a, a thousand times correct that it is our responsibility to make sure that what we publish has um, is accurate. And if you discover that something's wrong uh, or inaccurate, please delete it, take it down. Uh, let's say you wanted to do a, a monthly calendar here, this one here, let's, let's do this one here. So get a, a monthly calendar in one click. So it's creating a, a, a blog post, a, a blog schedule for me. Again, not sure what to write. You have no excuse anymore. There, check that out. It's just done a whole schedule. Now you do have to add this extra AIPRM. Um, add that in as a as a extra piece to go along with that, and then you just connect those two, and that gives you the extra elements, um, just like this one here. And a human like rewriter. So if you if you copy and paste your article in here and use this one, the human like rewriter, it will rewrite your article to appear uh, on a score of human generate generated between 90 and 100%. So this really is about uh, ensuring that you have content and that you're leveraging content so that you become a local market authority when it comes to real estate. So you could consider locations, you could consider, there's just lots of different ways that you could uh, use this, but it really is a matter of you sitting down and doing this. Uh, you can try and rebel against it, but you're gonna lose <laughs> because this is the wave of the future. It's, it's again, sitting there helping us do stuff not taking over from us. So there's no way that uh, that a robot's ever gonna be able to do the showing, unlock the lock boxes, let alone find the lock boxes. Um, some of you know exactly how funny that would be. Um, but at the same time, you know, becoming a local content authority is something that is relatively easy to do by using a couple of the tools. Um, again, you could use this even for the title. If you just want the title of the topics and you're gonna go ahead and write whatever it is you want on your own, you can do that. Uh, you can also delete these. So say I don't need this anymore. I can actually come over here and chat GPT and delete that particular element and it's gone. Um, same thing with this one. I don't need it anymore. I'm just gonna come in and, and delete that. And then this is this is where we started our session today. All right, um, so I'd love to take a couple of questions or, um, you know, again, there's anything that you would like to see again, if there's a demo that I could do or something else that you're interested in seeing when it comes to becoming a local authority, let me know. Uh, just to specific something I, I, I recently saw on, on social media is for people who are a bit uh, camera shy like myself, yep. there, there are now tools that 
you can have a voice over and there is an avatar is going to like the shape of your face and this is this ai is going to really read the based on script that you gave it or you have a voice voice over over the video and it's going to really mimic exactly like as if you were the one basically sitting in front of the camera and doing it so yes. this, this, this this thing exists now Yes, I don't do that. Um, I don't do that at all. But certainly there are some additional AI tools. There's a whole list of AI tools. So if, um, you know, if that is something, I would suggest for one, get over it. <laughs> I'm so unfriendly, Hamid. Um, but at the same time, it's um, it is there are some additional tools that will do video that will do, um, you know, voiceovers, all of those things. Um, and it really is a matter of, you know, deciding which toolkit, which tool package would make sense for you. But yeah, there's um, a ton of other AI tools that you could use. Good comment. Anybody else comment or question or anything else I could uh, showcase for you? I've, I've got some, not reservations, but I too have, uh, not that I'm camera shy. It's just, uh, I, I worry about being judged. So I tend to stay away from this. And it's a little freaky because I see when I do the video and I look at it and I think, wow, that's pretty darn good. Why am I afraid? And I'm still afraid. So um, uh, if you are, know that, you know, it's, I think it's a completely normal thing. People, people as humans uh, are generally afraid of public speaking. And this is the most public speaking thing out there is, is putting yourself on, on a recording where people can watch you over and over again. Uh, and it's freaky. So um, don't, you know, it's just, so this is just a rah, rah, Hey, do it anyway. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it, but yeah. it's hard. It's hard. And I think it's hard for everybody. And I think if we acknowledge that it's not an easy thing for all of, and I'm a natural ham. I love to be on stage. I love an audience, but this scares me. So I'm working on it. Well, and, and you can see that the blog posts don't require your image. That's true. And then I worry about being judged on my writing. I just worry about being judged, damn it. Yeah. And I can't do much about that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just, uh, you know, I'm just, I, you know, I don't know if it, if it helps anybody just to say, hey, well, you know, uh, other people are experiencing this too. I share it for that reason. Right. What I think on this, Shauna, is regardless if you do right or wrong, people are still going to judge you. Of course they are, but you know, I don't want to don't care. <laughs> yeah. 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 If, if you can care. be the who cares kind of person, that would be excellent. But I do know it's, it is difficult to, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. but you know, the best part about it is, you know, um, I don't care. <laughs> At least yeah. I got it done. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. And I know I'm good. probably different when it comes to that because I know other people, um, you know, they do care. Yes. I don't care. I'm, I'm okay. learning that too, Shana. I'm learning that too. That yeah. trying to have that attitude of I don't care type, but I do care. Oh, <laughs> it's it's Pamela is the classic I don't care. Well, how did they raise you to not care? Because, my, you know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's how you were raised. C hug your father the next time you see him and say, thank you for raising me not to care. Okay. <laughs> I'm, as we're talking, by the way, folks, I'm actually just doing the blog post for the for the um, the unearthing Toronto's historical houses. Weird. Yeah, I'm just doing that as we speak. Oh, look at you, multitasking. Yep. Okay, well, I'm gonna go work on some scripts. I'm hanging up. Thanks, well, Pamela. Now you know Good how to you. do them. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I just did that. All right, people, I'm going to stop the recording. And again, if anybody has 